Wow, Sinaku. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, sorry. Just had to make sure that worked. Okay. Hope everyone's doing okay. What do we have here? Organ Trader? Self Loathing Weekly? Hot Bunny? Oh, let me see that. Hot Bunny? No, Self Loathing Weekly. Self Loathing Weekly. Oh, yeah, what have we got? With Liverwurst. Want some? Absolutely not. Fair enough, honestly. All right, let's see. Nachos. They're mine. Nachos. Nachos. They're mine. Nachos. That's funny. Okay, I'm sorry. I just realized that what that was, and that that's funny. Mystery pastry. Okay, let's go back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a good morning, a good night, and a good afternoon by the time you see this. Uh, this is the second half of Sam and Max Episode 2 Situation Where are we going, Comedy. Sam? To the TV, the TV studio. studio. Goody! We've come across Myra Stump. She seems to be hypnotizing her audience into forcibly being in her show, if not watching the show. There's a little bit of a weird thing there going on. Okay, that is charging. Perfect. So we are trying to win some competitions. Last time, they said we didn't have the right voice. Let's give it a shot Testing. now. Testing, one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. <laughs> Hello, I'd like to do a little song I call. Uh... Just like someone else's song. Just song. like someone else's song, only somehow better. <clears throat> Shiny like a new Mylar balloon. Damn. Thinking about the rings on the great raccoon. And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. And let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note. Whoa! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You got my vote. Hey! I really think you could do this professionally. Thanks. But Peepers is my brother. There's no way I'm voting for anyone else. Okay, I can see that. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay it tuned must for be more unanimous. Okay. After this. Interesting. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get Wizard out of there. I think that's what's going on. 
So, at some point, I need to figure out how to do that. Ah, nature. Uh... Okay. An episode of Midtown Cowboys. Let's start taking. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? See if you can squeeze in some gross out humor this time. Ready? Action! Gross out humor. Okay. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! Let there be light. Goodness, who left this lying here? Okay. So I know that if we Open give the cow a hat. I know you're hiding a cow. Chef there cow. There we go. Life of the party. Hey. Aha! I know you got a. Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boys? Our private chef. This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la lettuce. And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know? It was back in my army days. I was gonna do this and see if this was a thing. Oh, look at that. Say, what's this? <laughs> I I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said moo goo gai pan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Whoa. Super! I'll try some of that! Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Aha! Hmm, interesting! That's one word for it. Hmm, there's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> This moo moo whatever stuff is really good. Uh, what's it called in English? Cow pie. Really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like. Now? Now. <coughs> Better get the serious toothpaste. <laughs> Zoom in and cut. Yeah. So Better get the <laughs> serious He's going to love it. Naturally. I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> so. Let's get the set back the way it was. Well. That was definitely interesting. And what's this one? Cooking without looking. Cool. I'm ready. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. Hmm. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. Oh, greetings, worshipful fans. Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What are we making, Sam? Okay. Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. 
Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. Uh, weird. Uh, oh my god, my eyeballs. Hold on. Okay. So I guess no more than a dash of uranium pellets. They also go great in Chex Mix. A dash of pink mink oil is a must. Nothing says I last ate real food in the 80s like the inclusion of something pink. Of course, who can forget the asbestos sprinkles? This stuff isn't just for school lunches. Real kitchens use it too. Well. Every chef has a signature ingredient that no one has ever heard of or used. Mine's MSG. If you put in enough that you feel a burning sensation in the back of the neck, forearms, and chest, you're just about there. Um, a pinch or two of wombat secretions. Make sure they're lightly damp to the touch. The wombats, not the secretions. A fistful of squid tentacles. Ooh, that's my favorite western. Can we say enough about roofing tile shards? Obviously, we can. Now, do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking showtime, one gorgeous, delicious cake, ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. Okay, well, that was interesting. Well, a cake. What could we use a cake for? Talk to the judges. Last time we saw you, you and your diminutive former child star brothers were in the thrall of a megalomaniac hypnotist with bad hair. What have you been up to since then? Well, after you hit us over the head, repeatedly, our careers have taken an upswing. Clearly. Hey, being a judge on Embarrassing Idol is a tremendous opportunity. I'm feeling the magic already. Tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity. I'm voting for Peepers no matter what. He's my brother. The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add. I said I was sorry. It's his birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks. I'm glad somebody remembered. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? A treat would be nice. Isn't this also St. Boniface Day? Patron saint of carnivorous plants and spiky things? I think that's next week. What kind of perks go with this gig? Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by color? Ooh, craft services food. Have them bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes. Ugh. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine, but they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Enjoy your judging. Catch you later. I got it. I got it. My cake's green. It's not covered in tomatoes. But what did we see in the last episode? A tomato ca a tomato. Oh my god. You saw a ketchup station.
And we have a cake. World's looking up us. Hey, it's our newspaper. It's Baron Max. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? I've got monitors you don't even know about. You know what? That, ex that honestly explains a lot. Alright, so we're gonna go in here. And take the cake. No thanks. A little ketchup is always good on a cake. So gross. But I feel like this is gonna be amazing, because now I know we're gonna give this cake to Wizard. And he's probably going to die. <laughs> the plan has been set. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. studio. Goody! Happy birthday. Oh boy! Birthday cake! That red frosting looks tasty. Excuse me. Boy, that was really uh, oh really. Uh, uh, uh. Time out for number two! He'd better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me! Okay. Now let's try this. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Love Has a Thorny Backside. <coughs> Shiny like a new my larva. Excuse me. Thinking about the rings on the great racket. Blowing like a zephyr on a deal. And let's hear from our judges. Your moribund crooning is far less offensive than Peeper's excruciating slaughterhouse squalor. Um, thanks. You really nailed that high note! Woo! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner! No! Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. Ben Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do! Right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol.
Yes? Oh, you two again. Well, what is it? You've got the length of one commercial break to explain yourself. Can't... may we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself! Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. I blew up a public restroom last week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract, for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording, contract, and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet. But I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course! What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. Show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. Well, I'm certainly impressed with how far standards for entertainment have fallen in this country. Um, thanks? But you're also going to need a recording contract and a nice juicy scandal to be a guest on my show. We do have a recording contract. In Bottom Records, take a look. You should have us on as guests. I like my guests to be celebrities audiences are talking about. Have you been embroiled in any juicy scandals lately? Our landlady thinks I'm the one who broke the dryer in the basement. Come back when the media is talking about you. And don't forget to watch behind your ears first. Remind me... Of course, dear. I'll need to see your recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a juicy scandal. What if we have our own video game? Video games? Ugh, those things will real. We'll be right back. Take your time. Let's go. Okay. We're famous. Hooray! Can we begin misbehaving now? Begin? Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Yes? Oh, you two again. Well, what is it?
Remind me. Of course, of a juicy scandal. What if we have our own video video game? Actually, we graced the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only so I can talk about America's lamentably endless fascination with depravity. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking and you treat the audience with the utmost respect. And if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. <laughs> Give her a hand, everyone. Bessie Bovine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood, out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse, but that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Matt. Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky, in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end! But that bear has got you... Sit! We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. We're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, your talented, hot new celebrities have taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. I'd like to sing a song from my upcoming album. Feathers and Furious Scribbling. I'm almost certain the audience might probably enjoy that. Howling at that drippy old punk of moon. She's at brunch today with some baboon. And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. Thank you, Sam, for putting the numb back in musical number. What a wonderful way to remind our audience that you don't have to be talented to be famous. And a perfect segue into my latest tirade about the lamentable state of modern popular music. I mean, blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, 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 yak, blah, 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 blah. Testing, one, two, three. I'd like to sing, if I may. Is that wise? Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. Whoa, careful there, Tiger. That was wonderful. I'm so moved I almost don't have a long hectoring screed in me. Oh no, wait, there it is. Thank goodness. Self-referential songwriting is a dangerously blah, 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 yak, 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 yak. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakity, 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 yak, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakity, 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 yak, blah, blah, blah. Unwise in front of a live studio audience. Blah, 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 yak, yak. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. There's something you should know about that picture in the Times. I'm not sure I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickup, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it seems. How so? 
It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved, someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking. Who? Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh my, audience. At the risk of making the obvious comment, that was shocking. Is she breathing? A little, but the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts. I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious dream bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the okay. show again soon? Um, Did not expect this, but here we are you at the end. Did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette butts. And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Bread logs make me loki. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. Okay, so thank you guys for joining me through the rest of episode two, Situation Comedy. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you very soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out what's going on in our future here um, with the channel. So you guys take care, and I'll see you very soon.